Hello, my fellow digital sticker makers. Has this ever happened to you? You're trying to make a pattern to go on a cute little sticker or something like that, and you're duplicating and you're moving it over and you're duplicating again, and it just starts to end up all wonky. Things aren't lined up, things are falling off the page. It's just not what you envisioned when you started out. Today, I'm gonna show you in Procreate how you can make a pattern that's going to seamlessly tile over and over and over again, however many times you want. You're not gonna have any ugly gaps. It's gonna look great. So grab your iPad, jump into Procreate, and let's do this together. All right, so I'm now in Procreate and I have a square canvas. That square is going to be really important as we start to duplicate this pattern. So make sure you start with a square canvas and then we're going to start creating what's going to be our pattern. Now the big key here is don't let anything touch the sides. We're going to move what we create around in order to make this something that can tile very easily. So for now, we just want to decorate the inside of this. So today I'm using my flower and leaf stamp set that I do have available in my Etsy shop if it's something you want to use to create create your own things for your stickers, but by all means, you can make a pattern using just about anything. I've made tons of patterns with kind of free form abstract things. I've made patterns just based off around the idea of arrows repeating over and over again. So really you wanna decide what do you want your pattern to look like going into it. So today I'm gonna to use these stamps to kind of create a floral leaf natural pattern. And I'm just gonna start grabbing and kind of creating a collage of different flowers and leaves. And each one is gonna go on a different layer, which is gonna allow me to grab that arrow tool, resize, spin, etc. Don't be afraid to start with your initial pattern kind of larger, because it actually will shrink as we design this. And just notice as I'm creating this, I'm letting things get close to the edges, but I'm not letting anything actually touch the edges. So I'm gonna speed this part up a little bit as I finish decorating my initial square. Alright, so now I've got most of this filled in. So now my next step is I'm just going to go in and add some color, pulling from one of my color palettes I've already developed. If you're not sure how to make your own color palettes, take a minute to check out this video, which shows you how. Combine all those layers and then create a new layer behind them to kind of create that rough sketch look. So to do that, I'm gonna add a layer, and then I'm gonna drag that layer so it's behind, and then I can do kind of that rough color in sketch look. That personally, aesthetically, is something I really like. Now you could certainly do this where you color in the whole thing. It's really just a matter of whatever look you want to do. So I'm gonna go in and add color to all of my stamps until I have a final working product, and then it's time to turn this into a pattern that we can duplicate. As I'm adding the last final touches to coloring, you might also want to take some time to set your background color. A helpful hint I'll give you guys as I set up my patterns, I always make sure that the background color is not attached to the images. And this is because it allows me to use the same pattern over and over again and just change up little pieces of it. So you might have even seen some of these flowers appearing in patterns in some of the kits I'm already selling. It's just kind of a quick little trick for working smarter, not harder. Once your layer is completely done, I like to duplicate it and turn it off. And that's just so that if I mess things up, I'm not going back to square one. In fact, I might even rename this as my backup layer. And it's just there as a just in case safety net. Our next step is going to be to actually move this layer all the way to each side of our canvas so that we have edges that will repeat. The problem is when we click the arrow tool right now, it's not going to select our entire square and we needed to select the entire square. So to fix that, I'm going to create a third layer, grab just any old random color and color in each of the corners. And we're going to delete this so it doesn't need to be pretty. Don't worry about the color. Now by swiping right on a layer, I'm able to select two layers at once. And now you'll see the entire square is selected. Now my goal is gonna to be to move this 
all the way to the left and all the way to the right. So first, let's duplicate both my corners and my layers. So right now you should have five layers, two that highlight those corners, two that are your pattern, and one that is your backup. Now in a minute, we're gonna be moving these layers, but let's make sure all of our settings are optimal for making that move. So I'm gonna click on my arrow tool and then go down to the bottom where it says snapping. You're gonna want both your magnetics and your snapping turned on. This is going to help snap your layers into place as you're moving them and make sure it's done very accurately. Once that's on, we're gonna go into our layers, make sure we've got one corners layer selected by swiping right, selecting a pattern, and then you're going to slide it all the way over to the left or the right. As you're doing this, you're gonna notice these yellow lines pop up. Once you've completed one set all the way to the right, then you're gonna grab your corners and your layer tool and do the exact same thing, moving it all the way to the left. This is probably the trickiest part and the part that I messed up the most often when I first got started. As you're moving it to the left and the right, you wanna make sure you wait until you see that yellow line pop up in the middle. It'll look like a big cross, which will tell you you're exactly halfway through. So once you've done that, you wanna to merge together these two layers. So I'm gonna pause for a second just to kind of help explain what we've done. What we've done is we've kind of taken one picture, split it in half, but push them both onto the edges. And what that means is if I were to take this picture and tile them next to each other across a line, they're always going to be seamless because they are the same pattern, it's just lined up from the side to side. So if you see, if you look at maybe the rows, you can see the leaves cut off on one end and then it's on the other end. And now we have a new pattern that we're working with, except this time, we actually are able to line up the left with the right. We're gonna do this again up and bottom, but before we do that, you'll notice a lot of times as you're creating these patterns, the middle ends up looking very empty. So in between each moving step, I like to fill out the middle a little bit more to make the pattern look how I want to. Just like before, it's really important that you're not touching anything on the sides. So I'm just going through the same process, just kind of filling in some of that empty space that was created in the middle. Now that I like how it looks, I'm gonna re-merge together all those layers. So now my layer two is my new pattern. And once again, I'm creating that backup. I'm gonna duplicate this layer as one of the layers I'm gonna move and then create my corners and duplicate that. Let's pause again and go over our layers. So we have our backup layer, which is our initial pattern. We have our layer two, which is our second backup of having the left and the right ready to line up. Now I have my layer two duplicated an additional two times. So that's my layer three and four. And then I have two of my corner layers, layer five, ready to go to help me move these up and down. So my goal is gonna to be to take one corner, one pattern layer, move it up, and then we're gonna repeat that, grab one corner, one pattern layer, move it down. So let's jump in and do that now. So I'm gonna select one of my corner layers, a pattern layer at the same time, grab my arrow, my snapping is still on, and move this one all the way up till I see those yellow lines. I'm gonna go back in and grab my other pattern layer, my other corners, move them all the way down until I see those yellow lines. Go in and delete those corners because I don't need them anymore. And then merge together my new halves. So now I've got a pattern and you can see on the screen that there are pieces that are now lining up with the top, bottom, left, and right. Which means I can now tile this pattern and the left, bottom, top, and right will always line up when I duplicate it over and over again. Before we move on to that final step and we're showing you how it works, I do want to once again go in and fill in just a little bit of this empty space. As you're filling in that empty space, be very careful not to let anything touch the edge. There we go. So I'm gonna merge together all those pieces I just added, and I'm left with a layer that is my pattern. I notice I don't need to worry about the corners anymore because I now have pieces on all sides of the canvas, so when I click the arrow, key, it's actually going to highlight the whole square. So to show you how this works and to kind of shrink my pattern down a little bit, I'm going to go in and duplicate this actually four times now. And we're going to turn these into one each corner of the canvas. So I'm going to take one, drag it down to one corner, grab my next layer, drag it up to my next. And again, you'll always see those yellow snapping lines appear, which tells you that you're doing it exactly a quarter of the way down. 
And so now I've duplicated my pattern four times, but when you zoom up, you notice you can't actually see a line there. And that's because of the process we went through with creating those edges. And in theory, I could merge this and duplicate it a hundred more times, and you'll always be able to not have those edges. And what's great is now that I have this layer, I can use this to make stickers, to make covers. So I can go into my layer, click on it, choose copy, and then I can jump back in to another canvas and take what is a very boring rectangle sticker and then I'm going to add another layer on top. And if you drag three fingers down, you'll have a paste option. And now there's my pattern. And I'm going to shrink it down to make it even smaller, line it up on the sticker I've just created select that layer and turn it into a clipping mask and now we've got a little rectangle square with the pattern we just created on it the other thing i use this for a lot is to actually make notebook covers so if i were to turn this the other way again i can use my three fingers swipe down choose paste and then i can move this down to the bottom of my page and then repeat it a second time. And because it's a seamless pattern, I can now move this one up to the top of that page and I will have a full page that is now one pattern. And just to finish out the fact that it's a cover, I can even go in and add a little piece to put the title of my notebook or planner or whatever I'm using this for. And so this is how I create the majority of my planners that have patterns on the front is by starting by making the pattern in a separate file and then creating the cover in a new pop file. So using this seamless pattern, you're going to be able to make planner covers, stickers, you name it. You could have so much fun with the patterns. I have an entire file full of patterns in Procreate that I use over and over again for stickers, for covers, so on and so forth. I will say this one took a little bit of practice to get to the point where I mastered it, but once I mastered it, it really becomes foolproof and it becomes kind of addictive. So I hope you enjoy. If you create some fabulous patterns, I would love to see it. Pop on Instagram, share with me your work. If you haven't already, subscribe. Can't wait to see what you guys create. I'll see you next time on more designs.